everybody that before we get started, I want to make sure we really emphasize food safety. And since I'm not there with you in person to like guide you and cook with you, it's, um, you know, obviously your responsibility to like make sure you've washed your hands really well, make sure that you're storing your food safely. And we're not going to be working with um, like any meat, raw meat products today, but nonetheless, you know, food safety is really important. So always important to keep um, your utensils and your pots and pans and your hands clean. So I'm going to take a second to wash my hands before we get started. Feel free to get your space ready, get your ingredients out and set up. But if you need to do any kind of basic like unwrapping or unscrewing, or um, if you want to like open your cans, you can or get your pots and pans out. We are going to be using all four burners um, for this if you decide to make all of the ingredients, all of the recipes. Um, so it's a full on meal prep type thing. So I'm going to wash my hands for a sec. Oh, the other thing I want to mention is it's Eating Disorder Awareness Week. And so I want um, to invite everyone this year for the first time we're doing, we're going to be establishing a campus task force to address weight stigma and eating disorder prevention. And so um, Elise is going to put in the chat a link to our survey and we're asking all the campus community for just their thoughts on fat, you know, anti-fatness, um, weight stigma, eating disorders, eating disorder prevention, and like how, it, how, like what you see on campus and any kind of resources you think like we need or barriers or what we could be doing better. So it's really open-ended and I invite you to um, make your voice heard. If you want to even put your email in there, if you want to be kept abreast of what's happening or want to be more involved in that, um, please, you know, you can leave your info there or it's completely, you can do it anonymously too. That's fine. Thank you. Um, so welcome everybody. I um, want to get cooking because we have like five different things that we can make. And if we have a little time at the end, I'll even show you how to kind of assemble these burritos. So I want to let you know too that I um, have made these burritos and assembled them and, and stored them in my freezer. And so I've tested you know, them out myself on me and my family and they do freeze pretty well. And so it's really flexible. You can eat them at the moment, uh, like for that meal and not freeze them. And in that case, you can add other ingredients that don't freeze as well, like shredded lettuce or avocado or guacamole or extra salsa. So you can get as creative as you want and personalize these um, to your taste. Um, you can make them spicier or milder and you can adjust the ratio of things inside. So it's very flexible. And what I love to do is make a big batch of these ingredients and then kind of keep them in the fridge. And you can even do like burrito bowl with the ingredients and not put them in the burrito or the tortilla if you don't want to. So it's pretty flexible. Are there any questions about anything before we get cooking? Okay, so feel free to chat. Um, with Elise is gonna be checking the chat. So please feel free to ask questions in there as we go or just unmute yourself and participate because I love the company. It's way more fun to chit chat while we're cooking and um, you know, I get tired of the sound of my own voice. So I, I'm happy to, um, to have interaction and have you guys unmute yourselves if you want to. And, and then at the end, if you wanna share your creations and take pictures of what you've made or sh share feedback, um, you're welcome to email me directly, or you can post stuff to the Be Well Cal um, social media platforms for UHS. Looks like we have a couple more people joining, which is awesome. Um, so please, I'd love to hear feedback about how it goes for you. Um, so please make sure your hands are washed, make sure your ingredients are safe. You have a good knife and a cutting board and a safe place to cook. You're gonna need some pots and pans and burners. Everything is on your your handout that was in the bags at the pantry and also in the, I think the registration link um, had the ingredient information, the recipe information. So we are gonna start with our cilantro lime rice because that is the recipe that takes the longest to cook. And so I wanna get that on the stove now. So let's get chopping. And what I like to do is start with just our chopping process. So we're gonna chop up a bunch of stuff um, and we're gonna kind of use some of it for the rice and then we're gonna save out a little bit of it for our other recipes that we're making. 
Welcome everybody trickling in. Uh, we're gonna get started with our cooking, okay? We're gonna start with our lime cilantro rice. So the first thing I wanna do is um, get our onion going. So we have, um, get, your, get your onion. And the first recipe calls for about one and a half cups. So like a whole, you know, medium sized onion, but we're gonna chop up a little bit extra and use some of that in our other, um, our eggs. Okay, so I'm going to get going with um, cutting this. What I would recommend doing is like, if possible, have a trash can nearby. You can just easily dump the stuff that you're not using or, you know, your um, compost bin if you have that. So just kind of be like, have everything around you all ready so that it's very efficient. Okay, and we're going to just get going with our, um, our onion first. You're going to, do, do you guys all know, do people have a technique for cutting their onion for, for chopping it? Anybody have any tips for us? I heard that if you don't cut the root, it won't make you cry, but um, I've never really, um, I haven't really, you know, mastered that skill, so. Okay, that's interesting. I think, I think to me what makes me cry is when I get the juices. So when you cut it, just any cutting and I kind of um, muddle the surface and break the cell membranes, those oils kind of release into the air. So it always makes me cry, it totally irritates my ears. But if you leave the root intact, when you cut it, it stays like all together so that it's so much easier to, to keep a hold of it and chop it. So what I do is I just cut it in half and take off the papery outer layer. I'm not a trained chef, by the way, I'm a dietitian, I'm a home cook. So I cook for my, uh, my three kids, you know, and, and myself and so I'm just sort of, an everyday cook, just like you. And I just learned through doing and through like learning over the years. So there may be other proper ways of doing this, but here's how I learned. So you have your half, it, you always wanna cut on a flat surface if you can. And you, I like to cut like um, some slices down the long, down the middle here, like several layers and then slice. By the way, when you hold your knife, I've been taught this is the right, uh, you want to hold it kind of right up on the neck so that you have more control over your knife. And you're going to cut like small slices. You're kind of making a pattern, a grid pattern, so that then all you have to do now is to slice and it's diced. Do you guys see that? It's like dicing automatically. So it's really quick and easy. And then it minimizes the amount of time. The end, you kind of have to. I have to fudge it and, and then you do the same to the other half and to me that's like the fastest way of uh doing your onions my knife is not that sharp which is kind of dangerous my table also is a little high it should be a little bit lower but this is what i got right now so i'm gonna, I'm gonna make do Oof. Okay, I feel the onion in my eyes. I've heard all kinds of tricks for the onion chopping, uh, like bread in your mouth, like you hold a piece of bread in your between your teeth and it absorbs the oils and all kinds of crazy stuff. And really, it's just like try to be fast about it so your eyes don't have to be around it. All right, so for our rice, let's start um, heating our pan. We want to um, we want to, well, hold on a second. Let me move this stuff aside. I'm gonna put my, what I would recommend is we wanna cut up all of our stuff, our spices and seasonings so that we have it ready to go. I'm gonna move my onions to a separate little area. So this probably, this recipe calls for one and a half. You know, a half cup is like the size of a computer mouse. So it's kind of like that. That's half cup. And so like three of those for the, um, Woo, for the rice. And then we're gonna use a third of a cup or thereabouts for the eggs. So you're just gonna kind of share that onion with those two recipes. Now we're gonna do a little garlic. So you wanna get your, your head of garlic. We're gonna do four garlic cloves roughly chopped. Ooh, you know what? I'm gonna rinse this because it's super bothering my eyes. Four garlic, this is a gigantic garlic clove. So I can't tell if that's one or two, but we're gonna smash it open and find out. But I'm not gonna do four of those because that would be 
too much. I might do like that one plus another giant one. And for garlic, you wanna just take your clove, which has a skin on the outside, and you're gonna smash it with the flat of your knife. So you put your garlic down, you just give it a smash, a really good firm smash, and that loosens the skin, and then it just pops right off. It's so easy. Okay, so that was actually a little twin. There was like two in there, identical twin garlic cloves. There's two, and then it's like worth three in there. That's huge. I, in fact, that's a lot. I like it garlicky, so I'm just gonna go for it. Now these ones, you wanna just rough chop. That means don't spend too much time chopping your garlic. Just give it, again, hold your knife carefully. You're gonna do uh, just, you know, keep the tip kind of down on the board and just give it like a, you know, run through a few times to get it roughly chopped. There you go. So that's probably good. It's just there's some chunky pieces, but it's going to be so delicious. All right. So that I'm going to scoot off to the side. Okay. We're also going to do some scallions, some cilantro, our tomato for the um, eggs. And we're going to do our serrano pepper last because it's so spicy that you don't want the oils from that getting into everything else because then everything will be super spicy. So I'm just going to do right now our cilantro and scallions. Let's do that next. These are kind of, this cilantro is what makes this rice dish really special. And then the scallions are optional, or green onions that is another name for scallions. So I'm gonna pull out three of these because I really like the taste of these. These are yummy, but definitely not necessary for this dish. Just kind of elevates it and makes it a little bit more gourmet, a little bit more special. I've already washed these, so I cheated a little bit. If you need to take a minute to go rinse your vegetables off, please do. Just rinse and shake it dry. You don't need to wash with soap or anything like that. Okay, so these are just sliced. A simple slicing is good enough. It depends on how oniony you like it. You guys know that the green part of the onion is less intense than the white, right? The white part is like the really oniony part. And I like the green part a lot, so you can chop it all the way to the top if you want to. And then that's kind of like a garnish for the end for the rice. You can leave it out. You could throw some of those in your burritos too, it'd be delicious. I mean like just extra as garnish. Okay, now we're gonna do the cilantro. Let's scoop that off to the side and do half cup of our cilantro. I just rinsed and shook this. The rubber band is still on it, if you have that on yours. And then I'm just gonna run my knife through it and do like computer mouse size. So I'm just gonna do like, but I love cilantro. So I would probably like chop up the whole head and then have it in a bowl and use it on everything because I love it. And I think cilantro is like a love it or hate it. You guys do thumbs up if you love cilantro and thumbs down if you hate cilantro. I'm so curious. Well, oh, I'm thumbs up all the way. I'm expecting you to cook and do your emojis, okay, you guys? Do people have strong opinions? What do you think, Elise? It's a very polarizing vegetable. Some people love it, some people hate it and say it tastes like soap. There's yeah. something about there's some sort of like chemical thing about how like some people genuinely taste it as like soap. I think I can see why they do that though. I can see that I love it. I just it but it yes, it's polarizing. I'm sorry, I don't mean to divide us and tear us apart with this issue. Okay, there's our cilantro. So now we have our stuff kind of ready. Oh, let's do our tomatoes. I'm gonna move uh this off to the I'm gonna just take my cilantro and move it aside for later and my, um, right, and my, yep, and my scallions. That can all go in a little bowl if you want, off to the side or just scooch it off to the side. And now I'm gonna do, okay, we gotta get our tofu, I mean our um, rice cooking. So why don't we get our rice cooking and then we can chop the rest of our stuff. Let's get this on the stove. So we're gonna heat, in a pan that has a lid. So I'm gonna use like 
oh, and you have a camera right here. Do you see this? So uh, this pot is like my one that's kind of deep and it has a lid. <coughs> this recipe makes a lot of rice. It makes four cups of rice and it's so delicious. You'll have leftovers you can use for other stuff. And so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to turn it to medium heat and add my oil. Um, Um, okay. So I'm going to add uh, three tablespoons of olive oil. Listen, don't worry about measuring too much. I'm just going to use this tip on my olive oil. I'll just kind of pour it in there and count slowly. One, two, three, and call it good. One time around the pan is approximately one, two, three. I like a lot of olive oil. Be liberal with the oil. All right. That's heating up. My burner is kind of wimpy, so I have it on a little bit. You know what, I'm gonna use the back burner for that because burners are kind of lame a little bit. Yeah, okay. So the oil is heating, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the onion and garlic. So we're gonna put in a cup and a half of of onion. So we're not going to use all. We save out a little bit of um, onion for your eggs, like a third of a cup. So like a small handful. The rest can go in. So a cup and a half can go into your um, rice pan. So I'm going to do like my computer mouse one, two, three for the rice, my garlic, my huge things of garlic. So that's gonna be a very garlicky rice, which I think is delicious. You're gonna need a spoon to stir that with, the, stir the um, your rice with. You probably wanna use a wooden spoon or something that's heat resistant. And you should hear that starting to sizzle soon. Hopefully your burner is better than mine. You know what, let me get, Switch the room because I don't like my burner. So it's kind of really wimpy. So I'm going to do a little switcheroo musical musical thoughts. All right, how about that? Okay, so that is going. You're going to saute it around four ish minutes until it starts to smell really, really delicious. Then we're gonna add our rice to that to coat the grains of rice in the oil. And then we're gonna add the coriander, lime zest, and um, salt. So you know what we can do right now is get the coriander and salt and lime zest ready to go. So I'm just gonna get a little bowl. You don't have to do this because I know it keeps dirtying more dishes for you to have to wash afterwards. You could do it onto your cutting board, just have a little pile. Um, but, you know, I'm gonna just, Keep it organized here. So I'm gonna um, coriander. How much coriander do you need? Let's see. Uh, we need uh, a tablespoon of coriander. And again, these are so forgiving. You don't even necessarily have to measure with a measuring spoon. Your thumb is approximately like one tablespoon size. So you know, if you think about like. The, the size of my whole thumb and the, what's in this tablespoon, you could kind of just eyeball it. If you really want to measure it, if you're more of a measuring kind of person, you can totally do that too. So this is what gives the rice uh, this really interesting taste because coriander is a particular flavor. I really like it. Um, but you know, I know that spices are expensive. There's a few basics that are good to have in your pantry. So that and then the rice, I'm sorry, the um, salt. We're going to do our um, one and a half teaspoons of salt. We're going to measure that in there. The salt, you don't want to be like totally off on because it could be, you know, it's always good to undershoot the salt and then you can always salt it more later, but you don't want to over salt. So I'm going to do one and a half teaspoons of salt. Okay, so the salt, and then we're going to do our um, lime zest. So while I'm over here, I'm just going to give my, my um, onions a little stir. Oh, it's starting to smell really good. Like a 
loudness. Okay, if your lime is not juicy, you know, you can um, prick a little couple holes in there and throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds and that kind of loosens up the juices, makes it juicier. So you can also roll it, you can roll it um, on a hard surface to kind of um, start breaking the membranes and make the juice come out. So um, you're gonna need to juice it as well as get the zest. So do you guys have a zester at home? This is a really, really good kitchen tool. This would be a really good thing to add to your, to your kitchen equipment at home. I use it all the time, like almost every day. Um, and you're gonna zest, uh, how much lemon or lime zest? It's just the whole lime. So you're gonna do just the first layer of the skin, you're gonna zest it. So you're just kind of like scritching the top of the green layer of the lime to get that zest in there. And again, super flexible. If you don't wanna do the whole lime, you don't have to. It's just to kind of give extra lime flavor. And then at the end, we're gonna add the lime juice. We're gonna fold that into the rice at the end. Okay. I think Mira has a question. Yes, Do you want to yeah. unmute? Hi. Yeah, I just had a really quick question. Um, yeah. For the rice, so are we cooking that like, uh, we're not cooking that separately in like a rice cooker, right? Like it'll be in the pot yeah, like raw. Yeah, we're sauteing the vegetables and we're going to put it in there. Okay. And the rice would be like uncooked, right? Or so we haven't added the rice yet. I'll show you. We're going to add the uncooked okay. rice. We're going to saute the um, uncooked rice to kind of coat it in oil and oh. then we're adding the liquid. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so now I have these um, seasonings that we're going to add after we add the rice. And I think our, um, our onion and garlic are probably almost ready. It's looking really yummy. It's looking softened and smelling really fragrant, which is good. It's a good sign. So we're going to add... Now we're going to add our rice. So that was a good question. So let's add our rice. Now the rice, um, we're going to use two cups of this um, basmati rice. And I kind of broke the bag, so I have it in a Ziploc baggie. Rice can be a little bit messy if you spill it. I'm going to pour my two cups of rice right into the pan. One. Two. That was kind of a messy job. But I think that's pretty close. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then you want to saute and coat those grains of rice with the with the oil that's in there and get it like mixed into the veggies. We're also going to add um, coriander, the lime zest, and salt. So we, once you give your rice a stir, then you can add your little bowl of ingredients. And it's gonna start smelling really good around there. The lime, the coriander, and the onion and garlic is just really, really yummy. And you wanna give that a little stir. And we're gonna add our liquid. And we're gonna let this Thing simmer for like 20 ish minutes. So um, once it's once you've given it a stir, you're gonna add the water. So we're gonna add four cups of water. It's a two to one ratio. So we use two cups of rice and we're gonna add the four cups of water. If you wanted to use broth, you could use broth too. But there's plenty of salt that we already added. So you, you um, wanna be careful about over salting. If you would, if you wanted to use broth, I would recommend um, adding less, like maybe half, half or two thirds of the amount of salt that we added. Okay, so got my one. That was two cups. Okay, there's my four cups. I'm going to stir it just a tiny bit to make sure that like nothing's clumping up. And then I'm going to put the lid on. Oh, I want to bring it to a boil first and then lower the heat and put the lid on. Okay, so this might be a new way of making rice for you and it, um, it makes it just a little different. It's kind of, it's just different. It's, it's like uh, more of a casserole type of thing, you know, it's with these other ingredients. So I guess it's more of like a rice pilaf type of thing. 
Okay, I have the heat up. I'm just waiting for that to come to a boil. I'm gonna turn it to low, put the lid on and set my timer for 20 minutes. How are you all doing? How's it going with the rice? Have any questions? I don't see anybody. Hi, sorry, could I ask one more question? <laughs> Um, for the, the ratio of the water, like how much water did we add? Four cups for, of water. Four cups of water. Okay. Yes. And then we're, we're going to wait for that to boil. Yeah. We're bringing it to a boil and then we're going to lower it down to low heat to a simmer and put the lid on tight so that it'll just cook there in the pan. Okay. Got it. Um, I can't really see the chat, so I don't know. Um, feel free to call out if you have questions or at least you can interrupt me anytime. Okay, well, we're waiting for our rice to come to a boil. Since we have our cutting board out and our knife still here, let's get the tomatoes chopped so we're ready for the... Um... Actually, I changed my mind. Let's start making the tofu because that also has to simmer for a little while. Okay, so I'm looking at my rice. It's not quite boiling. It's going to any minute and I'll turn it down and put the lid on. Okay, and set my timer for 20 minutes. Okay, tofu. This is the easiest thing in the world. There's a more complicated recipe on our website, um, on our recipe webpage, and you don't need to do the complicated one. You can just do the simple one, but it's up to you. They, there's a little bit of extra flavor that you get from doing the longer recipe, but why not keep it simple? Um, okay, this is starting to boil this rice, so I'm gonna do my turning down and putting the lid on. I'm turning it down to like, you know, like medium low, depends on your burner. My burners are very wimpy right now. So I'm just gonna turn mine to like medium-ish and put the lid. Where did I put my lid? Oh, here. Okay, so the tofu, super easy. We're gonna pour a little bit of oil in the pan. We're gonna turn our heat on our tofu pan to like, uh, like medium high. I have a quick question. Yeah. Sorry, I missed a few steps. So are we putting the water in the onion and garlic? Like yes. same pan? Oh, okay, got it. We put the, um, we added the rice to the onion and garlic and we gave it a stir. And then we added the um, coriander and the lime zest and the salt and we stirred that together. And then we added our four cups of water. Oh, okay, got it, okay. Yeah, so now all the rice ingredients are in that pan cooking and Thank you for telling me we need to turn on my timer for 20 minutes. Okay. And if it's on a, like, bring it to a boil before you. Um... Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, the doggy likes it so far. Whose dog is that? It's mine. So... Oh, yay. <laughs> How sweet. You know, cook it with your dog. I love it. Um, okay, we're gonna do our tofu real quick. So I'm just gonna put like a tablespoon or so of this canola oil. You could use olive oil, whatever oil you have around is fine. So I'm just gonna add a little dribble of this in the pan. Um, you know, a tablespoon, again, like thumb, thumb size. If you don't have measuring spoons, that's fine. Now we're gonna heat that over the medium high heat. And then we're gonna add, um, the tofu, we're going to crumble it up and we're just going to add the other ingredients. It's not, it doesn't really matter the order of how you add these things. It's so forgiving and simple. You can literally just take this, you know, the block of, oh, I put it up in the wrong pan, huh? Hmm. Those were the eggs. Okay, change my mind. Oil in your, I would use, we're going to do like this whole block of tofu. So I actually would recommend using your bigger pan for the tofu. It's kind of a lot of tofu. And so just take the whole whole big old block. You wanna just dump the water out, like rinse, you know, pour the water out. You don't need to dry it or press it like some recipes have you do. This is just a big old block of tofu. You're gonna crumble it with your hands into the pan. Super easy. I would use a big pan if I were you. Oh, and I'm gonna turn my rice down just a titch because it is a little bit, um, it's bubbling too much. And squishing tofu with your hands is really therapeutic and fun. I recommend it. If you want to use a spoon, that's fine too. If you're totally grossed out right now. 
And it's like Play-Doh. Okay, so it's just crumbled up. You can crumble it up more as you go. And then, you know what is a weird ingredient, but it adds a little umami flavor is soy sauce. It just adds a little extra salt. So it's optional. You could put a little pinch of salt, but I'm gonna add like a drizzle of this, which is like, I don't know, a teaspoon or two. It's really, don't add too much because it will be too salty. So I'm just gonna add, A drizzle of that for some extra salt and umami was which I love about that. And then I'm gonna add um, some taco seasoning. So here's the thing. Some of the spices that you guys got in your bear bags and that you have at home are basically the equivalent of taco seasoning. This is just convenient because it's all in one pouch. Trader Joe's has a really good one that's pretty spicy. This one's just from Safeway. You can use whatever you want. If you wanna just use your own spices at home, the main ingredients in this are um, chili, pepper, and paprika, which we are also using. So whatever you wanna use for seasonings, whatever's convenient for you, um, use that. The taco seasoning is super easy and add as much as you want, depending on how spicy and how flavorful you like it. Um, the recipe here calls for one to two tablespoons. So I'm gonna eyeball it. I don't like it super spicy, so I'm gonna, oh, that's too much. So I'm gonna turn that down. Okay, so taco seasonings. So you wanna get the taco, you wanna get the tofu kind of coated in the seasonings. And then we're gonna add some salsa to kind of bring it all together. So tofu is just so versatile because it takes on the flavor of whatever you put in it, right? It's just a very um, easy protein. You could totally make this recipe with other proteins. You could use um, like a ground meat or you could use even like diced, you know, chicken. You could saute some raw chicken in there and then add your taco seasoning to that, whatever. It's very, very flexible. It's just basically one of our protein options for our burrito assembly line. Um, we're going to add the salsa. I'm going to add like about a cup or so. And I'm going to, you can add the liquid if you have like really liquidy. I have like a, a fresca, like a salsa fresca. So kind of liquidy. And so you could, it's okay to add that liquid because this is going to simmer and the liquid will boil off. So let me find a spoon. So I'm going to add. good amount of salsa. You can save out some of your salsa as extra topping for your burritos and for your, um, they were a burrito bowls if you're making that. And then you want this to simmer so the flavors kind of meld and that the taco, the um, tofu will kind of, the, the liquid will simmer off and what you'll be left with is the deliciousness of the flavors and the, the kind of the tofu curds and it'll be really delicious. So this has to simmer for a little bit. What does it say in the recipe? Like 10 to 15 minutes. You can give it an occasional stir and you want the you want it to be simmering. So you want the heat to be like high enough that it's gonna, the liquid will steam off. Make sure there's no big chunks of tofu because then the flavor is not gonna get in there. You want it to be kind of mashed up. The recipe that we have on our website is a whole, you bake it first in the oven to kind of dry it out and make it more dense, but that's a whole extra step. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more of this uh, taco seasoning because the color is looking pale to me. So I want it to be really flavorful. Okay, so that's it on that one. That's so easy. How are we doing at home, everybody? Is your kitchen smelling yummy? The taco seasoning, the one where we're given in like a little container. Yeah, oh, that's a good question. Ooh, at least you know? Um, I don't. Ooh. 
You guys, maybe, does anybody know they didn't label it? Can you um, take a little taste? Just wet your finger and take a taste. It should taste complex. If it just, it could be coriander. I mean, sorry, yeah, it could be coriander. I don't know. Did they put coriander separately? I don't think so. Okay. Do you think it tastes like taco seasoning or does it taste just I think it just does. Like I think it okay. does. Yeah. <laughs> Thank okay. You. Okay. I think either way it's going to be delicious, but if it was just coriander, it's going to make it taste more like, you know, very strongly coriander. And if it's taco seasoning, then you're, then you're good. Okay. So every once in a while, I want you to give your tofu a stir. I do not want you to touch your rice because if you take the lid off, you kind of interrupt the cooking process and all the steam escapes and then it's not going to be as effective. So try not to take the lid off of that one. If you don't have a lid that fits your pan, you can just put like tin foil or even like a plate. I used to use like just a big plate and put that down over the pot to kind of keep the steam in. It doesn't have to be a fitted lid if you don't have that. You're trying to trap the steam in there. Okay, so we have easy pinto beans, the easiest in the world. So basically you're just doctoring up canned beans. I have other recipes for beans you can cook from scratch, which is also super easy. And I highly recommend you do that. Like you figure out how to do that. If you have a slow cooker, it couldn't be easier. You just dump it in the thing and leave it on for six to eight hours. It's so great. I think that recipe is also on our website. It's like the pinto bean, slow cooker pinto beans. But for right now, quick and easy, let's use canned beans. Why not? So we're gonna dump the two cans. I like to use one of whole pinto and one of refried. You can do whatever other kind of beans you want. If you want to use black beans, if you want to use all whole instead of a, the refried combo, but I like having the mushy beans with the, some whole beans in the mix too. It makes a nice, interesting flavor. Okay, so let's put our um, canned beans in a little pan over, you know, like you're just heating it. If you want to heat it in the microwave, you can do that too, but um, I don't like to have to constantly monitor the microwave. So I'm just going to, Oh, take a minute to open your cans and you would you do want to drain out the um, the whole beans you want to drain the liquid out from in there if you're adding all the liquid to your pan it's going to make it really watery so you want to make sure that those are um oh i didn't write that on the recipe sorry you do need to drain it the the refried beans just can go in plop it in there as is but the refried definite or so the whole beans you definitely want to like dump the liquid that's in there it's just gonna be too liquidy if you don't. I'm kind of making a mess. Okay, it is 5.45 already, holy moly. I definitely want to uh, get these on and then show you the couple of other things. Okay, whole beans. Now let's add uh, cumin, chili powder. This is where like, if you wanted to just use that, that taco seasoning, you totally could because it's basically these ingredients. Half a teaspoon of cumin, which cumin is one of my favorite, favorite spices. It's so delicious. I'm gonna turn this on. You're just trying to heat up the beans. You're not, nothing special. You're just heating and mixing them. Half a teaspoon is not much, and you can add more if you like it more um, like spicy. So cumin and chili powder. Oopsie. Okay, that's the chili powder, and then a pinch of salt. So again, like canned beans already have some salt added, so you don't need to overdo the salt, but a little bit to just. Spice it up, you can stir, and then that just heats up, heats up, that's it. Nothing fancy there. But it just, it like adds a little extra flavor to the canned beans, because sometimes they can be slightly bland to me. And these will soften, the refried beans will soften as they heat, and so it'll kind of become more pliable, more easy to work with these and add to your burritos, okay? So I'm gonna give our tofu another stir. It looks like it's, um, see how it's kind of drying out a bit? It's all the 
steam is bubbling up. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the eggs real quick, okay? So we have our onions already cooked. We're gonna add our tomato, get our tomato and our serrano. So I'm gonna, these are great eggs that I'm just learning how to make. I think the key to these is to not whisk your eggs in advance. You add the eggs to the pan and just pan scramble them lightly so that, that you get kind of chunks of full eggs. Okay, so I've got two tomatoes. Um, for the eggs, we're gonna heat the medium-sized frying pan over medium-high heat. Then we're gonna add um, a little bit of oil, same thing as we did with the tofu. I know I'm going really fast, you guys. We, I don't. I want to make sure I show you these recipes. If you don't have time to make everything tonight, um, take your time, and you can come back to these. They're all pretty easy recipes. But I want to show you how I assemble the burritos too. So that one's like a problem burner. So I'm actually gonna. Move that one. Okay. So adding a little oil to my pan, I'm gonna add my, I'm gonna cut this up while that heats up. And my tofu, I'm gonna turn my tofu down a little bit because it's starting to really dry out and that's great, but I don't want all the moisture to be gone. So for my tomatoes, I'm gonna to use a serrated knife to make it a little bit easier to chop. And I'm gonna take out the stem part because that's not yummy. Although you could leave it and that would be fine too. So we're gonna, we have our white onion already chopped, right? A third of a cup of chopped onion, that's from earlier. We're gonna do our plum tomatoes. So two of these diced. And you can just as big as you want the pieces to be. I like them kind of smallish. And if you don't want to use the whole amount, it's kind of a lot of tomato. And if you don't want all that, you don't have to use it. Okay. So I'm gonna get my onions going. Okay. That's a lot of tomato. We're gonna add our cooked unchopped onion cook for about a minute. We're gonna add our um, serrano pepper, which I'll show you in a minute. And then we're gonna add our tomato. So we're basically like cooking our vegetables lightly. We're not gonna overcook them. But I've added my onion. So let me show you the serrano pepper. Are you guys familiar with cooking with uh, spicy peppers? So my little kids do not like spicy, spicy food. And so I have to be careful about adding too much so that people will eat it in my household. So the serrano pepper is pretty spicy, but it's, um, we're making a pretty big batch of stuff. So it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna cut off the, remember that the seeds are pretty spicy. So I'm gonna probably scoop out the seeds and probably only use half of this serrano pepper. You cut it down the middle the long way so that the seeds are in the inside. You can then scoop the seeds out with a knife or a spoon and kind of um, put those away in the trash or the compost. And so you're lightly sauteing your, uh, your onions. Keep an eye on your tofu. Okay, I'm gonna do my little scooping out of the seeds. Now be careful when you scoop the seeds out of the serrano pepper because when I was doing it last time, I was like scooping and a seed kind of flew out and like juice like flew in my eye. And that's not good to get the hot pepper in your eye. So you wanna be really careful with where the seeds and the juices go of the pepper. But it peels out pretty easily with a little spoon. And then you just want to get, you know, dice it up into little pieces. I like to cut it into like just thin strips and give it a slice. 
you guys, if you stick around till the end, there's going to be an evaluation form. And if you fill it out, you can enter to win a $25 gift card. So I hope that you stick around for a few more minutes here. So I'm going to add this to my onions for my eggs. I'm going to add my tomato. Pretty juicy. Let me give that stuff a stir for a couple of minutes. We're not overcooking, right? And then we're gonna crack our eggs in there and just kind of pan scramble them lightly um, and lightly salt. And that's it. It's like a light, fresh tasting dish, and which is what I love about it. And with that rice, um, it's so delicious. And the beans. Um, so if you've got all kind of a light saute, you might want to give your beans and your tofu a stir. Don't forget about them. They're heating up. They're getting all hot, ready to cook and assemble in your burrito. Yeah, this looks ready. Good. If you want to use different spoons for everything and be really careful, you can. I'm just sort of like kind of mixing things because I don't mind the tiny cross contamination. Happening. Oh, can I show you one other thing while we wait for that, those to saute? The cream recipe, it's so yummy. And this can make it all super delicious, this chipotle sauce. So if you can, get your sour cream, get a little dish, put in some of your sour cream, about a cup, but you can do more. If you want to have, I mean, this is good to just keep in the fridge to throw on things because it's just absolutely so delicious. So these um, chipotle peppers that are in adobo sauce, it's brilliant, okay? This recipe doesn't call for the peppers, but the sauce that it's in. So you take the adobo sauce and you put one or two teaspoons, like two or three teaspoons of it. In other words, again, like a tablespoon-ish amount. And it's just the most delicious flavor. I'm going to use just a spoon, put in like a couple, you know, about a teaspoon, two or three of those. And then it calls for um, some, a squeeze of lime juice and a little bit of water and a little pinch of salt. And this sauce is going to be deliciousness. I'm going to cut my lime. We are going to squeeze some lime juice into our rice in a minute. My timer has, is about to ring. I'm just gonna put a tiny squeeze of lime juice, like that, and then a little dribble of water. And that is to thin it so that it becomes more of a sauce that you can drizzle. Like two tablespoons or so of water. And then I'm just gonna give it, oops, sorry, splashing. I'm gonna give it a little stir. You can use a whisk or just a spoon or a fork or something. And give it a stir. This uh, is like secret sauce. It's so delicious. I'm gonna turn off my rice because my timer ray, it looks done to me. It looks delicious. And it looks like my tofu is getting nice and dried out and looking yummy. So this is my sauce, and then definitely taste it before you put it on things. See if you can adjust the flavor, okay? I'm gonna um, crack my eggs on there and show you real quick how to do the eggs. Okay, one, two, Four, five, woo, six. All right, and then I'm going to use my spoon. Actually, I'm going to use my tofu thing. I'm going to let those sit for a minute and cook up a little bit before I scramble them. The only other last thing we need to do is add our lime juice to our rice. All right, 
right? So my eggs are starting to set up. Can you see that? And I'm gonna like go in with my spoon and just kind of give it a little gentle scrambling. I'm not gonna overwork it. So it's full of vegetables. It's gonna be yummy. And I'm basically gonna like give it a stir and then let it just cook a little bit more in the pan before I turn it out of the pan. And then you wanna take the rest of your lime, squeeze it into your, um, into your rice, and you wanna take your little dish of the cilantro and green onions that you made and fold that into your rice as well. Okay, so I'm gonna add these yummy ingredients. Take my lime and do, you know, the rest of your lime or cut up another lime and put the whole lime worth of juice in there. You can make it as limey as you want. The lime and onion and cilantro go really, really well together. I know I'm moving so fast, you guys. I'm sorry. You should have made this an hour and a half, huh? Um, so, you know, we're almost out of time. I want to make sure I tell you guys. Hold on a minute. Before I forget these eggs, I'm gonna stir this up. These are looking good, they're setting up nicely. Okay, delicious. Oh, and then I'm just gonna stir the rice. Deliciousness, the rice is looking really good. It's a full pan of rice, so it's it needs to have a good careful stirring so it doesn't overflow its pan. Um, okay, CalFresh team at the Basic Needs Center is having a bunch of stuff this week. So I want to let you know, at least if you don't mind putting in the chat, they are having um, a family feud event tomorrow. They're having a um, CalFresh um, workshop or kind of um, event uh, pop-up where they can help you register for CalFresh. After that, there's a link to their signups for their events. So for CalFresh, you guys know this is like the California version of, um, of the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program or SNAP. You can get up to $250 a month. And so, oh, on Friday is the CalFresh clinic to help you apply for CalFresh. So there's a link to the sign up for the events. And then for questions, you can email CalFresh support at berkeley.edu. Definitely take advantage of that because a lot of students don't know that they would qualify for CalFresh. $250 worth of groceries per month that you could be eligible for, which would be amazing. Okay, what I do with assembling before we before you get off. Oh, the other thing is if you have time after you get off to fill out an email form, if you leave your email address, you can enter to win a um, $25 gift card. So go to uh, uhs.berkeley.edu. Wait, no, that's not right. What is it, Elise? It's is it a tiny URL or what? I'm forgetting. Tinyurl.com slash UHS eval. Yeah, that's what it is. And put it there and leave your name if you want to be entered for a card. I love your feedback. Okay, these eggs are looking like super heavenly and delicious and fluffy. So I'm going to turn that the, um, burner off. So everything here is looking hot and steamy. Okay, and the cream is looking ready. So I'll just, before you get off, I'll show you how to assemble real quick. What I like to do is take a um, tin foil. And you can do this like as many times as you have ingredients. We made a lot of ingredients, so you probably make a bunch of uh, burritos. I think it's yummy to do a breakfast burrito with um, the eggs and the beans and cheese. Uh, I think we included the cotija cheese or the queso in your um, bear bags and crumble some of that up in there. Um, so the eggs and the beans and the cheese and some of that sauce for breakfast burrito and for the lunch and dinner burrito, you could do tofu, the tofu crumbles with the beans, the rice, the cheese and the sauce. I think that's a combination that sounds yummy to me, but do what you want. I like to take a um, tortilla. And if you want to do it like here and sprinkle some of your cheese so that it kind of gets like, you know, incorporated in, 
And let's say we want to do a breakfast burrito. I would put some of the eggs. This looks absolutely yummy. Okay, put some of your eggs. Don't overfill because then you won't be able to close it up. And then you're just going to take a scoop of your beans and add the beans. I would put a little bit of that cheese. I would drizzle a little bit. My sauce probably needs a little bit more water to make it drizzleable. I'm going to put a little bit of my sauce to make it even more moist. I'm going to wrap this up and then I'm going to put a layer. That wasn't like the tightest wrapping job. You want to be more like very meticulous about wrapping it tightly so it doesn't leak. Wrap it in a layer of top paper towel and that is so that you can pull it out and microwave it in its own little wrapper and it won't leak everywhere. You're gonna wrap that and then you're gonna put it in a, a one tin foil. And then what you can do is like wrap it tightly so it doesn't leak. And I like to label it. So I'll just write like B for breakfast. You could write E for eggs. I like to just write like what it is breakfast. And then you can stick it in the freezer. Let them cool a little bit on the counter before you put them in the in the freezer. Okay, but stick these in the fridge, stick them in the freezer. You could eat some fresh for dinner or lunch at this moment. And then you also have like tons of meals for later in the week. And it will last for a month or so in the freezer or even a little bit longer. Um, it's so fun to be able to pull this out and just pop it in the microwave. Did anyone make all five recipes with us? Show us what you did. Awesome, you guys. Oh, look at that. McKenna, you're doing all of it. I love it, you guys. Are there any, ooh, Daniela, that looks really good. Mira, you have it going on. Tatum, looks like you are making it. I love it. Thanks for sharing, you guys. Um, did we put all the links, Elise? Is everybody set on eval link, CalFresh link, and the survey link? Those are the main things. Come to our website to look for any other services like drop-in nutrition counseling anytime. And the next cook along, which is on March, what do we say, 16th, 19th? It's on our calendar on our website here. Uh, let me tell you for sure. It's on the... March 16th is our next cook along. And Sarah, my colleague, is going to be doing it. It's going to be awesome. She's great. I will love your feedback. Please let me know what you think on the eval, okay? And send me pictures of what you made. I can't wait to hear about your burritos. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Toby. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.